I think, I think we need a story to wrap up the evening, don't you? And, and one of my fave storytellers has uh, agreed to grace us with part one of a cliffhanger in hopes that you might come back next week. Man, I don't have to write. I just have to stand here and wait. Look fantastic. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, they wouldn't let us have another, Doyen Rainey. And now for something completely different. It's been uh, se several years ago, I was tending my bar outside Austin. It was a hot summer day, 125, 130 in the shade. You know, of rays would bake a squirrel if you let it sit. Of course, I'm inside tending my books, and I, I noticed the heat blast when the front door blew open. There's a uh, uh, short man standing in the doorway. He's got a big, pale sombrero and... Uh, white poncho wrapped around him like a shroud. I said, what can I do for you? He said, whiskey. He sees me writing in my ledger and he goes, you were right, senor? Said, yeah. Um, learned from them nuns that rebuilt the town of St. Antonio, southeast Austin. And uh, he nods. He says, can you write my story? I said, is it long? He goes, no. All right. 15 copper, he throws me a gold coin, says, you must write every word, and when an innocent man comes south from Tejas, you must share the story with him. It will save his soul. So he sits, and he talks, and I write. It is a lie that I am the son of the devil. My mother was a Mexican, and my father was a wandering dog. It is a lie that I kill men to test my skill. I can only rob a man once if I kill him. It is no lie that I hunt dangerous men for gold. That part is true. Before dawn on that day, I positioned myself several hundred yards from the Tijuana steamboat platform. Anyone who's been to Tijuana knows that platform. An iron landing three feet above a black, flat plain with a wrought iron bench in the middle and a dirt road leading off to the town. The road is dusty and worn, built in the time of my grandfathers. The steamboat platform is ancient, from before the fall. I watch the platform through my rifle sights, until under the high and hateful sun I saw the expected ox-drawn carriage. It crept toward the platform like a massive scarab and finally stopped, coughed out a man in black, and turned to retrace its steps. I reached the metal tank by my side and twisted its valve. With a Gila monster hiss, the silver flex cable stiffened and my gauges danced. The master gauge stopped at trace mil PSI. Charged to trace mil PSI, my rifle will shoot through a horse, front to back. The man in black climbed onto the platform. He wore a top hat in the Kansas style and an overcoat with the collars turned up with a silk, scout, skilt, silk scarf around that. He wore shiny black shoes and black gloves and those black spider eyes that gringos wear in Mexico so the other eyes don't burn them. He carried no luggage. He looked around the platform, checked his pocket watch. After a few minutes, he sat on the bench. Only gringos wear black in Mexico. Mexico since the fall is a territorio blanco, all pale dust and sun-washed bones. I stepped onto the steamboat platform a few minutes later the air tank on my back and the rifle in my hands. The stairs creaked, but the man did not turn around. His eyes were on the horizon. You sent for me, Mr. Dreamcatcher. He turned when I spoke, looking like a man-sized beetle in his coat and glasses and top hat. He looked from my hat to my boots and nodded. Angel Hernando, the devil of Chihuahua. They say you are the deadliest thing that walks on two legs. I consider this statement. 
Your message said that you would require a special gunman. I do indeed, said Mr. Dreamcatcher, smiling. I was not always known as deadly. Once I was a boy, born in Sawaro to an Apache they called El Perro Nativo, the Indian dog. He had narrow snake eyes and a knife scar on his right ear. He talked more than he listened and drank more than he talked. He said that he came to Mexico to find love, but not even my mother believed that. No man ever follows his heart to Sawaro. I awoke on the night he left. I heard his boots on the path outside my window. He turned when I spoke. I carried, he carried a sack of food on one shoulder and a bow in his hand. I wasn't much taller than his waist back then. I said, you aren't coming back. He stared at me for a long time and started to turn away. I said, leave the bow. He gave me a narrow look. I thought he would kill me then, but I said, I'll take care of Mama if you leave the bow. Father had a gruff whisper of voice. There's nothing to hunt in Sawaro, boy. What would you do with a bow? Whatever I had to. He considered me. He looked back at the shack where Mother slept, and he laid the bow in the dust. He did not look back. I watched him walk all the way to the horizon before I picked up the bow. A few days later, I traveled into the world, carrying that iron and sprocket bow. It was taller than I was. I found little work. There were still towns in Mexico back then. When I grew hungry, I caused some trouble that an arrow could solve, and then I solved it. Once a fat, angry man of a mountain of a mare tried to take my bow away, I put an arrow in his balls and beat his face with a stick until blood came out his ears. I rode from that town with gold in my pockets and a name, El Niño Diablo. After that, I found work everywhere. By the time Dreamcatcher called me the deadliest thing on two legs, he was probably right. I pointed my rifle at Dreamcatcher. You offer a fool's price, senor. No man south of the Amarillo shell is worth ten bars of gold. True, but ten bars is a bargain for Tejas, wouldn't you say? Its king stands in our way. I considered him. The king of Tejas is a hard and powerful man with many allies. In whose way? He smiled again. My people are the ones creating etheric engines in the Topeka academies. We're rebuilding at Boulder. We've broken into old world mines there and are pulling out precious ore by the wagonful. Towns are rising up. Shops, doctors, lawmen, all the things you'd expect. Civilization is moving across the land like the 1215 bull, Mr. Hernando. My people are its engineers. I looked through the tracks. On the heat-smeared horizon, a coal smudge below the white reveals the coming steamboat. Right on time. You intend to ride the 1215? Yes, indeed. I'm hoping that you'll join me. I laughed. I have still never ridden a steamboat. I do not feel they belong in Mexico. I do not ride with madmen. Is progress mad? Understanding? Comfort? Sir, your land is a hell of sand and bones. A ruin. Come north and you'll see men raise wheat and cattle and dig for old world treasures the way men were meant to live. Though I kept the rifle between him and me, his gaze mostly lingered on the coming bull. As it drew closer, I saw its dark body against the tracks. I must have the gold up front, senor. He showed me his empty, black-gloved hands. No fool would carry gold in Tijuana. I have a promissory note from the Topeka Authority, redeemable at any bank north of Tejas. I pointed the rifle at his face. I will not trade a man's life for paper. A wise policy, sir, but I assure you the accounts stand ready. The road to progress is paved in gold and blood. That's exactly how the Topeka Confederacy pushed west to CA through Mormon Apache country. Gold bars and the services of men like yourself. I had one of them then. He shook his head. As you might imagine, sir, we've tried. The Tejanos can spot a civilized assassin from a mile away. They're fond of hanging them from trees. I gave a short, dry laugh. 
he was right about the Tejanos. There are trees decorated with gringos like Dreamcatcher all the way from Chihuahua to the Brazos. The white plumes of the bull's exhalations were clear on the horizon, closer than the Tijuana heat haze, which is not far at all. Mr. Dreamcatcher, do you believe in God? carpet man put it back put it back this isn't positivity this is technicality we don't we don't we need the carpet man what was that what was that again let him have it the return of legs. You will see more of legs and the second part of Doyen's story if you come back next week. Oh, two weeks. In two weeks, you'll see more of legs probably either way. It is unfortunately unavoidable. And that's our show. We like the legs. I like them too. But I can't admit that up here. He's got nothing to play off of. All right, that's the show. Go home. All oh, right, right. I, I got I, I got some work to do. I got some work to do. Let me let me get the cast back up here in whatever order they can they can stumble at this point. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, juxtapose Dorian Rainey, Brad Engel, Kasha Reese, and Wayne Green. And our very own, returning once again, Kelly Nigren. Thank you so much for every minute you gave us. And now on the count of three, if we can bow for the cameras, it'd be great. One, two, three. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs>